Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. And in this one, this is going to be my last video from the test server, part of episode 41 House of Legends, because it is releasing uh, today. The downtime is expected to be somewhere between probably 8 and 10 hours. I'll probably wage on the longer side because of it's, a, it's a massive update in terms of uh, content-wise, in terms of like the entire House of Legends and everything else. So it's going to be a long one. So I thought uh, at least I'd have this video out for you guys to kind of preview what to expect when it hits live, uh, what to do, what to do in what order. So let's bring it here. So the very first thing... Uh, you want to do is when you get into the House of Legends, you're going to want to uh, do this journal mission here. That's going to involve the uh, uh, kind of like the walkthrough of the tower because that's going to bring you to your ally mission. Uh, I've already run it, but uh, I've, I've shown it in my previous video if you go to my first ally uh, system guide. So once you do that ally guide, it's similar if you know uh, the mission that we had to do for John Constantine for the artifacts. Like you had to do that little warehouse, took like a few minutes. Same thing. So you go into the bat cave. You fight some ads, you fight the Batman who laughs, and then you get, um, I think it's Oracle Bot, which is the first uh, alley that you get, ally. So, and then you go from there. So that's the that's the very first thing I would do. In terms of uh, the House of Legends itself, they've added uh, vendors for like League Hall. So we're, we're in the main foyer right here. So they added uh, League Hall teleporters. And then in each teleporter wing, so say if we go to uh, this wing here, the main observation deck, you'll see here in this corner, It'll say to training room and vice versa. So if I go through here or on the side here, it'll be to archive a victory. So in each of wings, you can get uh, you can teleport to there. So just to, you know, not that it takes much time to run through the hallway because that's all it is, but uh, at least uh, then you'll have some time. So the second thing you should do is go to Doctor Fate for the daily reward vendor. So right now, the, the daily login screen wouldn't be here. If you go to your actions tab, it would be. If you've seen the live stream preview or that YouTube video, uh, then you claim your daily reward for logging in the first day. So that's the second thing I would do. Now, if you're looking for the episode-specific vendor, so as you saw in my previous video or some other videos about the Hall Legends, uh, basically each person has their own little vendor. So artifact vendor, R&D vendor. We go over here. We've got uh, the... Allies vendor, we've got the Affinity Mod vendor, etc. So, Rip Hunter is going to be the vendor for this specific episode, Save the Universe. Vanishing point, is that so, by going through here, uh, don't, uh, these aren't going to be the actual mark costs, it's because I have the elite feat to make everything else cheaper. So, don't really pay attention too much to the mark costs. It is cheaper uh, compared to other episodes because this isn't technically a full episode. So, we've got our, our Fugnit probably pronouncing that wrong whatever Fuganut <laughs> style which is not the one I'm wearing but it's essentially going to be this guy here so Tempest Fugit so he, his style you don't have the head style and the back style doesn't uh, go over the shoulder like that but everything else is essentially the same that's what the purple vendor is Thanks for keeping the then we get into the regular vendor set the which is the uh, right here Vindictive Ore then we get to the Elite Style, which is going to be the Enhanced Aura Guardian, which is what I'm wearing, except for the hands. So in terms of like the Enhanced Head, Back, Shoulders, Waist, Legs, Feet, that's what that style is there. And the Hand Style, once we scroll down to the bottom here, is going to be the new Time Hunter Hands. So that's not the style I'm wearing. I'm wearing the, the Fugant style, which is what, kind of what he had here. So if you go back to his hand style, that's the purple one. Let's see from his hand. The Time Hunter style is just his gloves right there. So we can go back there, touch on the OP item. So the OP item is going to be the hands. Uh, and, and similar to the um, Wonderverse content, not Wonderverse, uh, Flashpoint content, uh, they do technically have daily lockouts, but it is much faster. Instead of four days, it's two days in terms of refresh. They're still tradable, so you can buy them on the broker. Once again, those aren't giving me the mark cost because they're a bit cheaper. So in terms of the OP hands, this is the full style here and full stat, so I can compare the hands against the elite hands right there. So it's going to be an extra about 800 might. Um, what's that precision extra 400 prec? 
1,800 health, or sorry, 2,700 health, 1,800 defense. So, nice big jump. Now, in terms of max CR, in terms of gear, so 300 base gear is going to be for the jewelry, and the elite style is going to be CR 302. So that means you can still wear the OP face, because that's going to be the same item level, 302. OP hands are going to be 317, and I don't have the OP back on test server, uh, so that's the only thing I'm missing. So what that means is that max CR is going to be 348. Uh, I am 347 right now because I don't have the OP back. If I had the back, it would bring me to 348. So 342 to 348, it's only a 6 CR increase. Like I said before, this is, a, this is like a half episode, so that's why the CR increase isn't as large, but that's what you can expect. So the cost on the OP hands is really simple to level. You know, most players should have that no problem. You just have to essentially get the renown for the elite pieces. And even then, touching on that, the elite, you get 200, 200, and 600. So this is for Inner Sanctum. Uh, for Foss, since there's an extra boss for Foss 2, it's going to be 200, 200, 200, and 400. So it's still going to be 1,000 renown per uh, elite save the universe raid. So, you know, you only need 6,500 renown for max, 1,000 per raid. Do the math. takes, what, 7 or, like, what, 5 with a uh, booster. So very quickly to get full renown, pretty much straightforward to get full elite, and the OP hands are simple to level as well. So it's going to be very simple from episode from that point of view. So touching on the RNV vendor right here. So there is no generator mods and no augments for this episode. But there are new sorter plans. So unfortunately I don't have a flex that I can get it, but... Bulldozer is 1,277 dominance. Nitro is 2,555 might. Nutri is 1,277 resto. Vitcola is 798 vit. And then everything else like the, the PI consumables, personal damage field, etc. So these ones are Nitro Save the Coal Universe. And basically you can go to the vendor here and purchase... Uh, right here, the Solar and Coal Enhancer Save the Universe. And then the Catalyst one. Save the universe. So, if you need any nodes, nice and quickly easy, accessible with these two vendors here. So, in terms of skill points, uh, we're actually gonna, going to take this teleporter here to the archive. So, in this room here, there's lots of new vendors. So, over here, since I'm a hero, you want to jump over to these two villain vendors, and if you're a hero, Sorry, if you're a villain, sorry. You're going to want to drop over to these two hero vendors. And what these are here is that you can purchase all the vendor, like, PvP styles, the tier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like, all those uh, uh, those uh, gear sets that are in the Hall of Doom, you can purchase here. And off this one, and then uh, Evil Star here. Frozen Fury, Reverse... So all these styles here, you can now get as feats. So if you're a hero and villain, vice versa, you can get these style feats now. So if I go to like iconic ones and earn them uh, down to the bottom, these are all here: Doctor Envoy, Manta, Reverse Joker, Punchline, Fro Frozen Fury, Phantom Zone Reaver, Shroud of Anubis, Missionary's Malice. Now these are all old villain styles that I would never be able to get as a hero, but now I can. So. It's, it's a massive skill point boost, and it's going to be uh, 10 source marks each. Because if I go to my feat list here, styles is now 556. So on live server, it's like 536. So there's 20 additional styles that you can get. And only three of the vendor. Like you've got the purple uh, vendor or, or like ray drop gear. You have the regular vendor and the elite vendor. So those are three style feats, so that leaves about 17 new style feats that we can get from just this, uh, the old villain ones. And in terms of feats for this episode, uh, we do have some counter feats like uh, solos, duos, alerts, raids, uh, elite solos and duos, alerts, raids, etc. So just counter feats. And then these feats are going to be for the OP hands, getting 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So lots of counter feats which is typical. I don't think we're going to have many other feats at all. And then we've got the OP hands feats. The other feats 
are com are related to the pet vendor. So if we go back, so equip the gem tier two, mother box, snake turret, vampire bat, seahorse, starro. I think there's another one here, juvenile phoenix. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So there's about nine new feats in terms of that. Now those are a little bit tricky. So if you already have, you're not going to already have them because they don't exist yet. But if you buy them from the pet vendor, it's not going to count. The only way to get those feats, these ones here for the, the for the pets for equipping the tier two and tier three, like this one here, vampire bat you're going to have to run the content to get that pair bat to drop. So that means you're going to have to run back like uh, Shattered Gotham and, and uh, uh, the Arcane Raid to be able to get Vampire Bat to drop. And once it drops, you can equip it and you get the feet. It is it will be tradable on the broker, so you can buy them on the broker too for the feats, but that means you're going to have to run a lot of old content to get this. Atlantis, you're going to have to run uh, like... Um, Silent, like Crown of Thorns and Throne to be able to get Lant uh, the Seahorse to drop. You're going to have to run, like I said, Justice League Dark. You're going to have to run Metal Part 1 to get the Snake Turret. So uh, it's not so much forcing... Uh, well, I guess you could say it's forcing us to run all the content to be able to get the feats, but if you want those 25 feet points for equipping those uh, turrets, then you're going to have to run the content or buy it off the broker. So that uh, that'll apply only for those nine new feats. Uh, the other changes, like I said, no augments change, but your origins do go up to 302. So right now on live server, they're 297. Now they're going to be 302, so they go up by 5. But the skill point trees do not go up. Right now, they're 295 on live. They're still going to be 295 uh, on the, on live server once this DLC hits. Normally, it would go up to like either 305 or 300. But uh, they have not increased the base of the skill point tree, so you don't have to worry about uh, changing your armories at all when you when you log in. Like a typical DLC, all you're going to have to do is level up your augments and put. Uh, I figure what it is. Um, I mean, you can see here the XP is about nine million four hundred nine point four mil. So it's probably like another million or something XP or whatever. But uh, you don't have to worry about anything with adaptives. There is no adaptive augments for this episode. Only the origin ones go up by five levels. So in terms of allies. So the big issue uh, with uh, Zoom here. Zoom's damage is now splitting correctly. Or it's supposed to, they say. So the Zoom's damage is going to be much less than it was in my previous video. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be. Obviously, I'll test that when it comes out on test server. So I can get you those results, so you can make sure you know that whether or not you want to level it or not. Besides that, Emperor Aquaman, Flashpoint Batman, and Queen Diana will not be released tomorrow. Uh, I was confirmed by Sharon that the legendary allies, rightfully so, are not ready to be on live server yet because there are some issues with them. For one, Aquaman Seaside Restart does not work. Oh no, Restart works, sorry. It's a little bit weird. The... Um, Depending on how much supercharge you use, in, impacts the cooldown. So, say you use uh, like a hundred percent super and a, and a five thousand super, or like a hundred percent super and like a twenty five hundred percent super, then your cooldown will be reduced as such. So, like say it's going to be seventy five seconds for a twenty five hundred, seventy three seconds for a five thousand, you know, eight, like you know sixty five seconds for a ten, whatever. I forget the exact numbers, but that's that's how it works. So it's not a flat cooldown reduction. It's depending on how much supercharge you use in that window, and that's going to impact the cooldown. But here, my call, the pet damage one, that doesn't work. Queen Diana's take that, which is upon a pull, enemy weapons or debuff, that doesn't work either. Uh, and then Flashpoint Batman's Combat Suture was uh, nerfed a little bit. It's still really strong, but these ones just aren't ready yet. And for one, uh, they weren't going to drop on content anyway. They're going to only be on the marketplace, so then you had to buy them. So technically you could say that's pay to win because the only way to get these legendary allies are going to be for the marketplace. That could change as well. But right now, these three will not release only the three epics and the three, or sorry, the three rares and the three epics. So Cyborg, Zoom, Flash, Oracle you get for free, 
calculator house of legends bot and calculator bot are the only ones you can level so that means for me i'm leveling cyborg because i want it's passive and the cyborg is the best for a single target so cyborg is what i'm going to focus on first and then as a controller uh on eu server i'll be getting a house of legends bot first because that's going to be the best for a controller and that's pretty much it for me oh and i should say legendary catalyst so these ones here uh do i have them in my inventory no so let's go back to the allies. So the rare catalyst and the epic catalyst can be purchased on the vendor for source marks. The legendary ones are going to drop from end game content. So that's going to be the last three DLCs. So it's going to drop in like uh, QE. It's going to drop in um, Flash the Future, Flash Fantastic Voyage, etc. So end game content, these legendary catalysts can drop, which is good because we need a whole whack ton of them for legendaries. And they're going to be probably really expensive. And it means they trade up on the broker as well. So that's pretty much all I can think of. Uh, at least I can show you how the new uh, on-duty menu will work. So there's two things. So with Save the Universe, you can choose to go solos. You'll see if it's locked out or not alert same thing family reunion phantom zone uh, I'm, we're not sure exactly i can assume that the uh, batman content which is going to be inner sanctum and family reunion will not drop tomorrow it's going to be just the foss one which will be phantom zone and uh, foss 2 that's my assumption i don't know for sure because i'm pretty sure they're spacing it out but uh, that's essentially how this menu works now if you go omnibus uh, which is basically this is the all the old content so if i go raids so here thing, tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. Now, the tricky thing with this, say if I want to do tier five raids, I can't just queue one, I have to queue them all. So that's the one kind of downside with Omnibus. So you can't pick like, oh, I just want to run, you know, Metal Part 2 into the Dark Multiverse. I can't, I can't pick DM. All I can do is start queue, ready up, and now it's going to put me in the queue for everything. So it's going to say finding match raid so I can cancel it and go back or unready. But right now I'm in a queue of them all waiting to see which one pops. So, I mean, I guess it, it's something that you could just keep busy with because uh, you just pop it. But you can't select what raid unless you go to custom play. So I can go like unready or like cancel queue. Same thing with like the solos. I can't pick what solo I want to do. I just have to queue them all. And now I could technically do a Cersei's Trial Challenge because obviously it's a solo. It's going to queue up. And then it'll just keep going. So say say someone canceled and didn't want to do that, it would go to the next one, etc. Same thing with Duos. So that's, that's how Omnibus is working right now. I mean, I'm not too much of a fan of that in terms of how it, like, it just auto-queues. Latest episodes will be episode 38, 39, and 40. This will be the relevant content. That's why you can see in rewards it's not going to drop source marks anymore. I mean, same thing. Like, it's going to queue up all the world of Flashpoint. So right now it's going to queue up the, you know, Penitentiary, Royal War, Flash Tash of Voyage, and Flash of the Future. It's going to queue up all that and just put me in a queue for it. Which, I mean, great for some players that just want to queue, but... A little annoying for other stuff. That's why you have to go to custom play, and custom play will bring up the old menu. And that's how you're going to have to queue individually. Like I said before, healer damage. So it's a nice little UI. A little bit awkward how you have to queue for everything and just kind of keep going in order. But I mean, custom play is still there, and that's the menu that we're used to. So I'm trying to think that's pretty much it. I've covered um, we've covered the vendors and the new uh, techniques, the new styles. We've covered Max CR, we've covered the OP item, we've covered skill points and feats. Well, I haven't told you this. I don't know what the total skill points is because of all those villain ones. So I have no idea what the Max CR or the sorry, the Max skill points is gonna be anymore. It's probably gonna be like I would say at least ten skill points with all those because all those villain styles are worth uh, fifty feet points. So I would say at least 10 skill points at a minimum from this episode. And we're not sure how high the counter feats go, so I can't really say how many skill points because I, I just don't know. That's a lot. 
covered the new consumables, we covered the augments, we covered R&D. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you have any questions about the DLC, you can put that in the comment section and kind of follow along. But uh, if not, then we'll see you after the, uh, the downtime tomorrow. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.